Uh, do you think that this ultimatum in seven days with a reply of two days as given by the court of law would be sufficient enough to resolve this issue of local government autonomy? Okay, one of the things that I, I, I give credit to uh, President Tunubu is um, his decisiveness in tackling issues. Those, that, that, was, that, was, that was the critical factor that we lacked in the last administration of President Muhammad Buhari. Very decisive, very, very absolutely decisive. So credit should be given to him for that. In every area that he, that he has intervened, very, very active, very, very decisive in his, in his actions. So I, I, if, you, if you look at, I think this whole drama now is the presidency or the president or the federal government trying to redeem its image because there's so much funds after the removal of the first subsidy there's so much funds in the hands of the state governors right now like we have established so much fund from 700 billion or 800 billion in a month in revenue to the federal government from oil and non-oil sectors to one Point two trillion to 1.3 trillion in a month right now. So much to play around with for them. So much to play. Let not even go into that. So much to play around for them. So and then at the end of the day, people, government come, government go. People blame the president for not performing, for not being able to do some things. Whereas he can't sit down in Abuja and know what is going on in the local government. Don't forget that Nigeria entirely is divided into 774 local governments. Of, of which 433 do not have duly constituted local government chairman. Thank you. So wherever you are in Nigeria is a local government. Where we are right now is a local, local council. It's under a district. Exactly. So wherever you find yourself is a local government in Nigeria. But at the end of the day, everybody put the blame on Mr. President for not being able to perform. Whereas there's so much money in the hands of the state governors who have reduced the local governments in their state to a mayor or to mayor department in the governor's office. That's what it is right now. Because at the end of the day, and I don't blame them to some extent. Most of them just capitalize on the ambiguities in the constitution, the gap in the constitution, the confusion caused by the constitution, especially section 7, and then section 162, which we all know. Section 162 talks about um, uh, joint account for them. Section 7 talks about how they come about, how they came about structurally, you know, and all that for the local government. So, if most of them just saw the loophole in that section 7 particularly, which even the constitutional review, constitutional amendment review has not been able to handle up till now, the fact that the constitutional review has not been able to handle those sections up till now is why the AGF through the federal government or the federal government through the AGF is trying to intervene in this manner right now. Because if you want them to go through the constitutional review amendment, which they have been trying to go through for several years, remember during the uh, the, the former president um, of Basenjo's administration, 2003, he set up a committee also, and then the committee came up, headed by the ex of Lupe, came up with the with the with um, um, trying to make the local government autonomous as a third fear of government and then also try to abrogate this joint account states local government joint account that's what it there are two major recommendations but they couldn't follow through on those recommendations because it still has to go through the national assembly and then from the national assembly again it will still have to go through the state houses of assembly where you have to get two-thirds at least of the members of the state house of assembly to ratify it before it becomes a law. So knowing that these procedures very cumbersome 
and very stressful. I'm sure that's why we are coming through this route now. Because no matter what we see, that thing of local government fiscal autonomy or financial autonomy has to be put in place. Fundamentally, if it is not done now, it still has to be done sometimes. If it is not, so long as it's not done, whatever government is doing, it's, still like, it's more like pouring water in a basket at the end of the day. Now look at what happened in section in, um, in, in during the, the some some part of the clauses that the former president in 2023, President Buhari, signed about 16 clauses that he signed from part of that constitutional amendment, constitutional review that he signed. Now one of them was section one two one, subsection three. That section gave explicit autonomous power to the state houses of assembly financially financial autonomy to the state houses of assembly and the state judiciary and left the local government financial autonomy out of it entirely now because by the time it gets to don't forget that these governors have planted these boys at Planted them in the state house of assembly, most of them came in through their governors, planted them as Ketika chairman illegally, which is not in the constitution, planted them in um, in state independent electoral commission, you know, which should also be ab ab abrogated, planted them in um, local government service commissions. Which section 206 and section 170 is supposed to take care of. Now, in section 170 rather and 206 of the constitution, made provision for for um, uh, uh, federal civil service and the state civil service. We looked away from creating the local government service commission, and the local government service service commission. Is supposed to be very, very critical in the administration of local government in terms of human capacity. So he left it out. So, so now, what, what you have as local government service commission in all the states, they are a creation of the state assemblies. So the, the governor just puts anybody there and uses them for whatever he wants to do. So I'm sure the AGF, the federal government through the AGF, like I said, President Tinubu is a very decisive man. I'm sure because before now, what uh, previous governments have been doing is to massage, massage um, uh, 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 constitutional review started since 2011. You know, this current one started since 2011. They have been massaging, going to do public hearings in different constituencies and come back and strike, strike out whatever they want to strike out. And then um, at the end of the day, President Tunubu, President, um, the former president, Muhammad Buhari, was able to sign into law just 16 clauses and left so many other things out. For me, part of the clause that is even the most important clause in that constitutional amendment currently should be the autonomy, the fiscal autonomy, financial, the financial autonomy. autonomy of the local government. Because that is what is... Now, if you say crime is local, why can't you face the local government and do them well and give them the money and send money directly to them? If you say crime is local, and you say we are fighting crime, crime is local, so the local government should be more empowered to fight the crime. But you, you sit down in Abuja, you want to fight, fight the crime that is local from Abuja. So it has not worked. So it's a major problem that Nigeria, and I'm sure that's why, like I said, the, the current president is a very decisive person. So I'm sure they are going through this route because the previous route that they have gone through, the governors have stifle their efforts. The governors have realized their efforts, if, if I may use that word. Because he, he still has to go through, if they are going to go through that route, this process has to still go through the state assemblies. At least 24 state assemblies out of the 36 state assemblies are supposed to concur. 
before it becomes a law. Which is not most practically impossible because all most of these state House of Assembly members are students in the hands of their governors. So they are the ones that put them there. And then they still put so how 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 is that bill going to be passed? And they looked at it and said, okay, if we go through that route, this thing might not work. And if it doesn't work, so long as this our government is in power, the people will keep blaming President Tinubu of not working. Whereas he's not the one that is the problem. Because like I said, the only way you find yourself in this country is in local government. So he's not the one that is a problem, it's the governors that are a problem. Because they are the, go the governors are the ones hijacking all this one. Did you listen to that, um, the, the former governor, the former local governor chairman of um, one of the states in the, in the, in the West, I think two or three days ago, in Jebu East or something like yeah, that? Yeah, in Jebu East, you're correct. You know? Look at what he said. That as a local, he was an elected local government chairman with the mandate of the people. But look at what they did to him. Not to talk of someone who is not an elected chairman, who was put there without the mandate of the people, without any moral local standard to challenge the governor. So much more. And the mama said, he, he, I, I, I've gone to one, one of the states in the, in the, in the, in the northwest, not east before, where I was discussing with the local government chairman. And he told me that, if he tells me, this was about four, five years ago, four or five years ago or so, if he tells me that what comes to him at the end of the month is five million, I won't believe it. Five million naira to run the local government in the month. Hmm. So now that his own was even better compared to his own is even better compared to some other local governments, based on what that man from Ijebu was saying. That you have to come and sign documents you know, implicating yourself at the end of the month, a meeting that was supposed to, you know, so all these shenanigans happening around because we have not been able to tackle this challenge of local government financial autonomy. And so long as we don't tackle it, it's going to be a re continuously a recurring decimal in our national life, in our political discourse, continually like that. At the end of the day, the government at the center the federal government will not be able to achieve much because this crime we are fighting they are local so how did how does the chairman of the local government get money to fight this crime meanwhile security votes go to state governors go to state governors and largely to the federal government you know so and largely to the federal government in terms of uh, security um, uh, budget you know the police and the army and all that so but this man there hardly gets anything. So what does he work with? He's just there like a zombie, like just with nothing to work with. N n let's take it back a little into the background you've created, greeting this discourse of local government autonomy this morning from the loopholes in our constitution. Yeah. Now, one of the sensitive issues that this sheet also looks to address is the conduct of local government elections. Yeah. Now, there are some school of thoughts that feel that state independent electoral commission should be removed from conducting the elections and it should rest solely on the independent national electoral commission's shoulders for the conduct of local government elections, just the same way we have general elections. Yeah, Do you also agree with that? Absolutely. Absolutely. Because, like I said, um, the, the, the state governors hold down the local government in or rather hold down four sets of people the state assemblies currently the um local government service commissions the um uh, critical committee chairman illegally put there and then the um the um, the one you just mentioned now so if they hold them down in those four ways the sec the sec if they hold them down in those four ways, I, I'm sure that because this is also part of the, con the, the, the one of the clauses of the constitutional amendment, the, the state independent, independent electoral commission abrogating that law, they have to strike, take it out immediately so that because you have situations where currently 
all I need to do is to be in the party, to belong to the party where the state governor comes from or is. And automatically become a local and government chair. Automatically become a local government chairman or a councillor. So long as you are from that party, that's all. There's nothing like um, primary uh, election. There's no true democracy. Seems There's to be no true, true democracy that's supposed to start from the bottom of that pyramid up. There's no true democracy there. So if, so long as we don't take care of it or take it out, because there's not, nothing happens there. And then the state of the House of Assembly make budgets for them. So where does that budget go? So that is another way of siphoning public form because you make budgets for them. Just like the federal government makes budget for the, 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 the INEC over here. And then you make way that fund, those funds available to them. Uh, the government just sits down in his office. In fact, long as soon as he's coming into office, he already knows he has a name of people that are going to win the election. If he's even going to conduct the election. Because how many of them have conducted elections? I learned one, one, um, one of the states in the East currently, for the past 10 years, they have been working on um, um, Ketika Committee working with Ketika Committee Chairman, one of the states in the East, currently, for the past 10 years, working with Ketika Committees for 10 years, illegally. So where does all these funds go to? That is why there is no point, there is no need to have a state independent electoral commission because they are just mere appendage or extension of what the governor wants to be done in that state. Well, it's an interesting conversation, and in the coming days, owing to the federal government's lawsuit against 30 